Welcome everyone. So, as I've mentioned, I think um, you girls uh, are facing much more difficulties than um, transportation one because your um, nature or the characteristics of the industry are more online. And so I would like to ask the service industry actually has uh, a number of carbon footprints in many areas, such as um, energy, transportation, or waste management. And where should we start when creating our green transition? Or have we started? Yeah, please just feel free to express your will. Because we are all ladies, and so all first. <laughs> okay, maybe let me start with the order, right? Um, Yes, I think for us, uh, I believe personally that the green transition starts from within. As a company, how do we set our ambition to start with? And uh, I will repeat what I said as well, that I think fortunate to work with H&M Group, uh, we as a company set a target internally that we will uh, be climate positive by 2040. It was a it was a big goal that we set uh, four years ago. Um, so then the question was, how do we make it happen? And uh, you know, starting from the vision and driving the roadmap or drawing the roadmap uh, for our internal operations, and then from internal operations towards our value chain. So it's easy uh, still to work on the internal operations. As a company, we are 95% uh, using the energy from renewable sources. So that's the big thing. The, the million dollar question is how do we address it for the value chain? Uh, you know, I was asked a question, uh, uh, the jacket that you're wearing, is it sustainable? Yeah. So oh, yeah, great picture. <laughs> it's safe for me. It's also from your group. <laughs> I'm very, very supportive. <laughs> yeah. So it, it starts from a farmer growing cotton in a farm. And, uh, and just for everyone to know, cotton is a very thirsty crop. It requires a lot of water. Talking about future and use of our natural resources, the first step was, okay, let's start to reduce water, right? Um, so use lesser resources and then use them efficiently. And then, of course, is there a change, is the way to change cotton. So back in 2010, the company decided that, okay, we will replace natural or the conventional cotton with the BCI, with sustainable cotton. And then we invested in organic cotton and we, we joined a platform called the uh, Better Cotton Initiative, where we, we work together with a lot of companies and where we work with 1.3 million farmers to educate them on the use of on the use of water and chemicals. So we set a target internally by 2020, we will use all the cotton coming from sustainable sources. So that was one aspect, or, or just giving you one example of a step towards reaching the climate positive goal. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I, I'll just start and maybe, yeah, one can add. Since that you have your actions ready. So how about the other panelists? You have your roadmap or your, your goal to a green transition? So maybe as you said. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I think I'm um, quite similar to it, Jana. Um, uh, for Sly and Coca-Cola, we have um, set our strategy. Obviously, we have to follow with our um, you know, mother company, um, uh, John Swanson's. And John Swanson's had long road out to sustainability roadmap. We call it Sly 5, and now it's version 2.0. In fact, the 2.0 is already fully mentioned about net zero carbon emissions. And for us last year, we wrote out for working with Coca Cola, which is the brand owner. And we are the bottling, the only bottling plant in Hong Kong, the Hong Kong market. But we also have to also complement both Coca Cola as well as Wise and Missions. And um, last year, we wrote out uh, our sustainability roadmap, so I have a Coca sustainability roadmap for 2030. I'm pretty sure we'll update it. We were starting with the Swive Ride 2.0, but at the moment we committed 
by 2030 a science-based target, whereby we have to reduce both scope one and two by 70%, and scope one, two, and three by 30%. And um, I think for similar to a lot of um, our ladies here, um, consumer goods, our uh, consumer goods industries is slightly different from transportation, whereby they use a lot of fuel for their operations. And for us, we do that. And thank, thank you for CLP helping us to decarbonize part of our supplement to emissions. <laughs> um, but for our industry, so free, just like I said, is the most challenging if i can put it lightly in terms of our uh, total carbon emission obviously you have to know first of all um you have to know about where your carbon footprint is for us much more than 50 percent of our carbon footprint are so free a majority for our industry beverage producing industry uh, for us particularly it's not ingredients it's our packaging so we have to look at which is, you know, which areas most pinpoint um, uh, uh, or leverage we can leverage the most in terms of aggressive um, uh, carbon reduction. And, and like I said, so one and two is not as safe. And just go down a little bit, more than 50% of our carbon footprint is so, so free, majority of them is from packaging. And within scope one and two, um, we got about 85% of them is from electricity in Hong Kong and about less than around 30% um, is transportation. So we do work on those, but at the same time, and like I said, I thank you for CLP, which helped us a lot in terms of electricity, because in our plan, we do look at um, uh, energy efficiency, but we are the tallest um, Coca Cola bottling plus in the world. So we got like 55 residential full height production plants. So we need to ship ingredients up and down. It's not much we can do. We can look for energy efficiency. But fuel mix is extremely important in terms of decarbonization in those scope. What we can work on with our supply chain is to look for right packaging materials. In, in particular, in the early on in Sweden, we're sort of going to talk about how the so consumer goods industry can do is to look for, you know, not getting more virgin plastics. And that's something that we are trying to do in Asia is, is we're starting compared to the, the Europe, we are less advanced right, that we have to face it. Um, the uh, recycling infrastructure is much less sophisticated. Sourcing recycled content material in Asia is more difficult. Sourcing food grade recycled materials is even more difficult, but doesn't stop us. And that's what we committed to. In Hong Kong already, in Hong Kong for our Hong Kong operation, um, in terms of plastic waste, about 30 plus percent of them already is, has recycled content. So it's a big commitment. And it's harder for our counterpart in China and, Hong and, 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 and Taiwan to do so because the rules and regulations do not allow to. So you're talking about reducing obstacles, apart from facilitating circular economy, facilitating use of recycled content material in our packaging is actually really, really important. Not only in terms of money, but in terms of actual facilitation rules and regulations to support it. Letting public know that this is not just, you know, for um, uh, it's not just for us. It's for the whole whole society because, you know, you recycle somewhere, you need somebody to like us mm -hmm. to really buy those materials. So. I think on that regard, for um, our consumer goods, you, you really have to look at and put packaging for us is extremely important. So that's why what, what in Swaiko Kora Hong Kong we spent a lot of effort in terms of making our packaging recyclable, putting more recycling content on it, and share with our industry that we can do it. So that's what we do. So you can share with uh, Amanda, maybe, because I, I saw Amanda keep nodding you again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're also from maybe food and beverage. Exactly. Yeah. And so, is it uh, the packaging <laughs> sector or uh, for this segment is the most uphill task for meeting the green requirement? 
Mm, I would say uh, we are in the same beverage uh, industry, but we have a different, uh, I mean, scenario. Because uh, actually, if you talk about like green transition, actually we are in the green industry because plant-based milk itself is a green industry. So we have a very different uh, beginning comparing with um, Coca-Cola that is uh, so long history. For plant-based milk, we only have 30 years of uh, uh, history for oat milk itself. Um, so it is a new technology for us. Um, and what we do is uh, in the very pioneer position. Uh, the challenge for us is to actually do research and uh, scientific uh, studies, uh, stop editing with the, uh, in the uh, laboratory because we have no, uh, no one before us to, uh, to actually invest this uh, oatmeal product and the re uh, related like uh, oak cheese or gourd products, we are the first one. So we have to invest a lot of R&D uh, budgets on the green, uh, I would say a greener transition. Yeah, so our packaging is actually uh, only consists of like 10% of our total uh, sustainability, I mean, um, uh, greenhouse gas emission for the whole world. So uh, for packaging, uh, we have 87% uh, of our uh, using renewable uh, uh, resources to, 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 to have a packaging of uh, materials. So we are in the upfront. Um, so uh, unlike uh, Coca-Cola, uh, packaging is not our number one uh, challenge. I would say um, for us in our operation in Asia, uh, the most challenging part is education. Because plant-based milk is not a category in the government at all. It's not in the local regulations. There's no one to define what is plant-based milk. No regulation to regulate how you measure uh, the, uh, the, the plant-based milk is uh, healthy or is it uh, good for your health, good for the student, whatever. No regulations. So we have to set up a category uh, and to educate the consumer why they have to use the plant-based milk for their health and for the planet. Just like what we chat before the mm -hmm. uh, event, uh, we mentioned that uh, the sustainability actually comes from within. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Because I think uh, the, 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 the transition is that actually coming from the consumers. We, when there is a demand, then we can produce more. And when we produce more, it could be more accessible and more affordable for everyone. Just like what I'm wearing. <laughs> I think it's very affordable and it is very recyclable. Yeah. It uses the recycled bottle to produce it and it's very affordable price. So everyone can afford it and everyone demand for it. Then the uh, producer actually is very welcome to produce more for the uh, consumers and to drive the uh, uh, demand together with the whole industry. Yeah, so this is what we are doing in Hong Kong. We are actually uh, creating a debate for the consumers, like what is plant-based milk? When the government doesn't have this uh, category, we create that. We create this discussion and then to actually encourage, especially the younger generation who uh, have a very strong voice, especially in the social media, that they can like really share the voice among the community and drive the demand. So this is what we have to do. And we are actually looking for the government to do it with us together um, to, 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 to push the consumer back to the government or to the producer uh, to take this uh, so-called green transition uh, uh, procedures together. Mm. Yeah, similar situation. Uh, Secretary Wong should be here. Listen to our voice <laughs> from the industry sector. So how about Ophelia? Uh, I think that um, the, the mindset is also very important because uh, Miliki is producing supplements and also uh, other healthy products. And how about uh, the timing of COVID-19? Is it a good timing for educating people to go to a green transition or looking forward to a greener future? About green transitions, we are, our company already uh, implemented about 10 years. Actually, the, we understand, uh, we call so called before is environmental protection many years ago, but today we call it um, carbon neutrality. But uh, our company imports products from Japan and also from Sweden. It also creates carbon footprint. And all the products are made from natural resources from herbs, from sea, from seafood. So we need to care about the uh, biodiversity. 
And uh, so we, so early, we already aware about the environmental uh, protection, our, our, our responsibility. So we start some uh, small campaign, like a recycle campaign to educate our uh, frontline staff and also our customers, because our stakeholders, if they understand the recycle, uh, the, the bottles or the uh, packagings, so it can be a, a good way to protect an, our environment. So uh, we can see the number of uh, bottles, bo uh, boxes uh, returned to our company uh, increasing every year. So and also we are giving in appreciations to our frontline promoters to educate them that they are the part of the, uh, the company, they should promote this. And also it increase uh, the loyalty of our customers. Because this is the way um, now the customer will think because they watch the news, they see the, the extreme weather cases, flooding, Wi Fi in Australia. So they understand they should have something to do to react. So, so they are very helpful and also support our campaign. So, this already like uh, almost six or seven years already. And also, we communicate with our stakeholders because they understand our visions, because we're telling the factory that we would like to know more about the figures, uh, like the energy you, you're using every year, uh, or the, the waste, how you management, uh, how, man, how, how to manage the, the waste. So every time we ask them, it can be uh, with them, because I can choose other factory if you're not doing well. So we're giving them a lot of like pressure or uh, intention that we are sharing with you. We have a vision to, to be a better uh, supply chain. So then uh, we have a good successful story is we see Japan uh, last 10 years, they increase the solar panel uh, as much as they can. And also they are now benefit by this solar panel because they lower the cost because the energy uh, saving so uh, I'd love to share this case because maybe we are only a small company, a hundred people, but we import from the factory from Sweden and also Japan. We can give them some uh, sharing with them. We want to have some vision to, to protect the environment, you and me living in one world. So, so then it, it, it can be a successful story. And also Sweden, uh, all the packaging, uh, when we design the new products, we tell them now that we want to uh, have better uh, 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 environmental uh, uh, concept on the products. So every time you ask, maybe the first few years, there's no uh, much choices for them. Uh, the recycled paper or new materials. Now you can see a lot of uh, new plastic. Uh, we call uh, um, uh, green plastic can be the uh, uh, biodegradable, but maybe five, six years before, there's not a lot choice in the market, just as you said, you, if you want to do, but still nothing to, for your choice. So then uh, I'm happy that uh, 2012, our first product, which is totally biodegradable, come from Sweden, from out of box, uh, from uh, also inside, uh, packing the tablet, uh, the place that is not full paper is by degradable plastic. So even the cost are a little bit higher. So we can save up from other solutions, like a, we have a bigger order. So bigger order can have a bargaining uh, when we, they divide the raw materials. So we using this small skill to, to save up some money. People will say that uh, when you um, using this new uh, environmental protection uh, concept on the packaging, maybe the cost higher. Yes, it is from the beginning, but today it's even lower than the uh, than the original uh, uh, packing. So I think time is changing. Everything is changing. A lot, lot, lot more choices in the market. So the, act, the most important is we take action to push our uh, supply supplier or and also educate our consumer. They have also uh, one of the people to protect the world. So the $1 you pay, you have to consider 
the product or the brand, uh, the philosophy. Are you agree of them? Because we would like to educate the consumer. They should take the right role. Yes, uh, I think you would have a positive image as well if you you place emphasis on oh we we are doing green we are environmental friendly then consumers may support in different aspects and uh, as all of us just mentioned about the packaging let's focus on packaging actually I I think that um, from a consumer goods um, industry perspective it's quite difficult to achieve uh, some kind of environmental friendly packaging because uh, I can give you a very very um, good example because Christmas is approaching and many people are going to buy Christmas gifts. Uh, I've received some. When I unwrap the Christmas gift or well, ribbons, wrapping papers, boxes, and then bubbles, and, and eventually I can get the gift. So it's quite up here because people are expect, expecting some festive um, colors during uh, some festivals. But we emphasize on green. How can we strike a balance between the expectation of the consumer and the green transition? Okay. <laughs> uh, packaging is not my area, but I will still <laughs> give it a try from a consumer perspective. Actually, I can I can start by relating. Uh, I was in the store myself. Uh, shopping uh, at an H&M store and then you know you buy a, 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 a buy some products and then you end up in a paper bag and talking about a paper bag of where the paper is coming and how it is produced and how it will be then disposed so I think it's a lot about starting to educate the customer including me as a customer that how do you buy this and how do you create circularity around with the bag that you are purchasing. Uh, so I think that's that's one aspect of it. Overall, I, I think a couple of years ago when we when we were looking at the, the sustainable model of packaging, we had reduced a lot of uh, uh, you know holy bag that you packed from a supplier individual wrapping into a box wrapping and you know how do you make sure that there is an efficiency in packaging there is a, a, a per kilo of uh, goods that must be packed in a in a carton so it has to start with measurement it has to start with a clear goal and constant improvement towards that clear goal year on year quarter on quarter and I think that is the that's that's just a, a simple flow of work that that inspires 153,000 people who work in the company in terms of working towards one common goal, but following those KPIs quarter after quarter to see how do we how do we uh, you know make progress, and 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 the other aspect of. Uh, working, which I was also addressing uh, to Mr. Axelson uh, earlier about incentivizing. How do we incentivize our partners to drive that change early on? Because there are certain, uh, certain business partners who are early adopters who want to make that change early on. So how do we incentivize as, as, a, as an industry or as a retailer with our partners who can make that change early on so then then the peer group the best practice can can work much better so i think i would say that these are the two things internally and externally how we work with uh, with our partners whether it is on a subject of packaging or it could be in any area i would say within within the whole climate and circularity goal that we have but in garment sector, maybe much more easier. Before the food and beverage sector is quite a challenging issue, especially for some hygiene issue or some other um, technical issue as well. Um, actually, Susan just mentioned a little bit on it, uh, especially for like soft drinks. If you you tell the people that ah, it's made from some recycled uh, container. Will they a bit scared or they will, will be suspicious about the hygiene situation of the food they are consuming? 
Um, I think I think Hong Kong is lucky um, in that sort of sense when we try to do reduction, like light weighting of our packaging. I understand in other markets, we think that, my goodness, you're skimming, making my bottle light so it looks cheap. And I'm, I'm glad that's not quite the mentality for Hong Kong people. In fact, um, most people embrace the ideas of light weighting. If you compare our products, to other brands, um, not just plastic bottles, but aluminum cans, you will find that we're lighter. We're not trying to scale, but we try to reduce, and there's a lot of R and D go through to have the structural and physical integrity of the same product and the quality, while just trying to use less resources. There's plenty of R and D go for, and I tell you that. Going for cold colors quality system is not the easiest thing. In the <laughs> I can imagine. I, I can guarantee you that. So on that regard, we do spend a lot of effort on that, and and particularly in terms of recycled content, we have a we have pretty positive re response from our customers. I think it's also like working with your stakeholders, and and we work with lots of large scale clients. We call them customers, and they are our direct customers, hotels. Um, supermarkets, um, um, uh, fast food restaurants, and we try to offer not just package solutions, but package less solutions. You know, when you go to McDonald's, you have drinks, and if you, um, we, you can use, I mean, we, we, we put, do dispensing for that. And we roll out um, our water station, which is literally a vending machine for water. You can bring your own bottle and vent your water there. We have a machine outside. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, um, we, and this is extremely welcome by at Hiking Trail. Extremely welcome. People just, you know, um, walking in, uh, walk and really need cold water. They're so hot and they can vent it without using bottles. And that's, that's wonderful. We try to roll it out. Obviously, COVID didn't help, but we are, our vending machine actually was one of the few that's still operational, in operational, because we meet high strength uh, hygiene standard, whereby uh, Food and Environmental Hygiene Department allows to operate. Um, that's, we try to work out those reduction side, but also, like I mentioned, um, lucky in Hong Kong, we're still allowed to do that, to use recycled content. So far, we don't have customer concern, but we try to do more proactive things. For one of our brands, um, which is for Aqua, our water brand, we try to put information, plastic resin information, not just the clear plastic bottle, but the label and the cap. It sounds easy, and but we realize that nobody do it in the market, so we do it. It took a long time to convince internal stakeholder as well as ourselves how to put it, how to do it, what lessons should we use? Um, does customers see it or normal consumers see it useful? And I'm, I'm very glad to say that so far we have very positive results, not just from Green Group, but from government. I was just talking to um, uh, Michelle earlier and I said, great, hey, great. Hey. And recycle as well, because it provides transparency. And that is the sort of invisible capital for us, not just in terms of educating customers, but educating ourselves that putting those information out is not disclosure of something scary, but to help the society. If you can, if I can put a commercial term or, or PR term, is building brand love and building loyalty to a brand that we are trying to embrace and uh, 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 um, sustainability by providing more information to our consumer. So that's something that we're trying to do. Obviously, working in terms of recyclability is something that we, um, I work very closely with our supply chain colleague in transition. And luckily for our packaging, we work, we are almost there. And a lot of our, our bottles are very, very recyclable. Um, and a majority of our bottles are, are plant transparent. We put, like I mentioned, we put a lot of recycled content in it and we're still continuing to do that. Mm. So green transition is a process of uh, interaction, actually, from the consumers, also uh, from the stakeholders as well. So actually, um, packaging is also the challenge, one of the challenges in Sweden as well. So they do lots of R&D, uh, so as to meet the hygiene standards. So um, how about 
Ophelia or Amanda? What do you think about this? Especially for the uh, products. Yes, the, the, the products are uh, our container. This, we're using this glass bottle instead of plastic because, as you may know, the glass is easier for recyclable. And uh, we, we, all the bottles we uh, collected uh, from the customers will use it for a display purpose. The others we will send it to green groups for uh, upcycling to make it become sand and also become brakes. So when we talk to communicate with our uh, colleagues and customers, they appreciate about this because not only because it can keep the best quality of the, the supplement, at the same time, they know what we are doing because beside the story is we want to protect the environment. So, so even when they uh, a bit higher, but this will be another branding or philosophy of the company. So uh, we're not facing any difficulties about that. When you think this is right, you just go straight because some of the customer, uh, they are quite loyal and uh, maybe uh, our customer be, uh, up to 10 years still stay here. So many of them, they will share because they love the product. They love the quality. Instead of that, they love the company. Mm -hmm. So this is maybe a lot of uh, retailers, uh, they are facing when they put that, making production, there's a lot of difficulties about materials. But I think you have to choice and balance. And you think you're not using maybe the bigger shape of, of the boxes. You can have a bigger phasing in the retail market. People will know that in the retail shop, bigger phasing, bigger, uh, eye-catching, you have maybe a lot of more business, but we don't do that. We, we uh, downsize, I mean, stream the size of the products. Maybe you was, can see my product when you go to the shop, but when you take, look, take a look, you will see the product and also you see the, the, the story of why we do that, a smaller, because we don't want to have extra paper because that is the philosophy of our company. So when, the, um, when our promoters, they communicate with the, um, the consumer, the consumer will appreciate about that. I think um, this year, Consumer Council also share the, the figures that 80% of uh, customers, they are looking for a better choice of the, uh, maybe more uh, sustainable product. The 60% of them, they would rather uh, pay 10% more for the sustainable products. So this is the trend is coming. So we have to educate and that is our philosophy for the uh, retail market, mm. production of the uh, packaging. Yes, actually I, I read the survey as well. And so uh, this is a quite a good reference for you consumer goods industry. So how about Amanda? You cannot use gloves. I think you, you use, yeah. usually use cottons, right? Yes, we use cotton uh, because uh, we uh, our products actually all the way from uh, Europe to Asia. So to balance the uh, sustainability uh, uh, measure for uh, I mean in terms of the transportation difficulties, we have chosen tetra pack cotton packaging as a more balanced solution for us. So actually, uh, echo to your question, actually R&D take a, a huge part of uh, how we can uh, like, like uh, achieve that only 10% of our packaging, uh, uh, I mean, our greenhouse gas emission is from packaging. Uh, because we work very closely with our business partner, Tetra Pak. Actually, they are a Swedish company as well. So they, we work very closely with their headquarters on R&D and to actually um, uh, invent a very advanced uh, packaging uh, for a reduction of the like the, the, the packaging that actually contain the <coughs> as well as the secondary uh, packaging materials. So it's all about R&D. And also even for the little details, for example, the uh, small pack of oat milk, uh, we actually changed to the paper straw uh, this year. And we not only insert a little uh, paper straw in it, even the packaging of that paper as well, this paper as well. So they are totally recyclable. So these little details uh, is only appreciated by many of the beverage partners. <laughs> <laughs> it's super, super difficult, I would say. Um, and also like the Tetra Pak cartons, 
uh, the little tap on top, it's actually bioplastic as well. It's these little details that tell how we committed in the packaging uh, as a whole. But I think like uh, uh, not only on the producing the packaging itself, recycling is also a matter. In Hong Kong, the petrol pack facility is so limited. We only have one petrol pack <laughs> recycling facility in Hong Kong. And the recycling rate is actually very unsatisfying. Because the consumer doesn't do not know that actually petrol pack can be recycled. So since the, uh, the facility is built on, uh, I think it's 2019, the recycle rate is only 10% uh, of their maximum capacity. And actually like Hong is producing 27, sorry, 27,000 tons of uh, petrol pack every year. So you can imagine there's still a room for education for the consumers to actually help us to uh, recycle the packaging um, in, uh, whereas in the Europe or even in Taiwan and China, we have the facility to recycle the petrol pack. Hong Kong is far beyond. Yeah, so I think this education, back to the, the topic, education is very important. We as the producer have the responsibility to make um, products that are suitable for the consumers, but they are the ones that make the decision. Mm, we'll relay the message to secretary Wong. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, um, because of time constraints, so one very last question. Because in Sweden, opportunities are greater than or more than challenges during the green challenges uh, or green transition. So, what do you think? Do you think that this is also the picture in Hong Kong? Yeah, please just feel free to express opportunities and challenges. What do you think so? I think uh, every, you know, these challenges are on the context level. So every country has different challenges. And, uh, you know, currently, uh, if I would take an example right now, we, we struggle with the power purchase agreements when it comes to climate agenda. And uh, so many countries, uh, do not have the power purchase agreements uh, accepted immediately. So how we work uh, with, with countries like Indonesia or Bangladesh is basically work with the government, work uh, you know, uh, with the national stakeholders to enable the power purchase agreement so that business partners can purchase sustainable electricity or renewable sources of electricity. So, I mean, you're right that what Sweden brings is the story, is an inspiration, and how we turn this inspiration into real opportunities for the other countries. I think that is what we learn from, but, but every place has a different challenge, and that is what we need to address with, with the mobilizing uh, of the local stakeholders, local actors, and, and, and the government. So. Yeah, maybe, and maybe I can contribute on that regard. I think um, I mentioned earlier on about um, uh, government helping in terms of removing obstacles. That's very important. But um, we're lucky in the positions we are big enough to be part of the solution. And you've been having, you've just been very modest because you will try to put a lot of effort in terms of in terms of recycling as well. For us in Hong Kong, and I mentioned recycling is difficult. So we tried to be part of the solution. One of the very few manufacturers, probably the first manufacturer in Hong Kong, actually invest on recycling facility. And our first um, food grade um, PET recycling facility is about to be open. We waited for a long time, it will come. It is what is testing right now, it is going to come. And we, we actually are part of the John Venture, one of the third three uh, investors. So we tried to be a solution as well. And our uh, collection of the reverse vending machine that nowadays you can put them the bottles in and, and cash out. We are the very first in Hong Kong to work with Octopus to have the first cash rebate recycling machines in Hong Kong. Try to take start. Uh, we, we try to be a part of it. We can't be the only solution because we are not the only manufacturer, but we try to put our step forward and try to make the change happen. Yeah, and it pushed innovation as well. So, Ophelia, I think very positive because you can see our government are doing uh, a lot of things these days. And, uh, and I will recommend uh, SME, if they are without uh, resources, they should uh, maybe join Green Group or 
uh, become the member of BEC. I was um, the, the member <laughs> of BEC, and I signed the Low Carbon Charter last year to set up the framework. So, so this is easier for uh, the whole company can follow the same things, do the same thing. And uh, there's a lot of collaboration. We use the resources from the Green Group, BEC, and also the government. There's a lot of funding and the consumer behavior is changing. So we have to take action immediately to respond to this uh, a kind of change. Yes. Hmm. John, be easy for more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last That's more reason. Reason. <laughs> Um, I would see uh, more opportunities and challenges uh, these days with the uh, uh, government support and the actually the world I support on uh, climate change uh, uh, for issue. Uh, for us, like the uh, awareness is the most important for us to develop the industry. Um, so the more awareness we build, the more uh, uh, carbon emission we can save. Because for every sip of your hot milk, actually you can save up to eighty percent of the carbon emissions. So every sit we count and we see opportunities in the builder. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And please give a big round of applause to our <laughs>